So about 18 months ago, give will take, uh, we struck up a relationship with Neotologic. And that's the platform I'm going to be talking about today. And I will show you two apps that we've built on that, on that platform and how they've been successful and, and how we got them to where they are today. So a few years ago, about just before we engaged with Neota, we recognised there was a need for our, our team to be able to go to our professional staff and say, what's something you do every day, really manual, really frustrating, or perhaps it takes too long, that we could help you bring to life? Digitise, amplify, whatever the word you want to use, and actually bring something to life which, you, which you, you're frustrated by. So we went to market to try and find a capability that might actually facilitate that. And yes, we have some guys in a technology-based team that have some semblance of knowledge around coding and what that means, and that's their good at gathering requirements and doing things like that. But it's more than that. It's about being able to do things quickly and be able to go to somebody like here and go, well, that's interesting. So what do you do? You know, you talk to the person, you get an email back and forth, you get a checklist filled in, and then you make a decision, you go back to them, that sounds really hard, sounds really time consuming. We, we can perhaps talk about that. Let's sit down, talk about what we can achieve um, using an app. And go, oh, and now, oh, don't we have to brief the developer, don't we have to go out and you know, work out how we're going to do this? No, 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 we have an in-house capability that we can just build something ourselves, and then we'll show you what it's like, and we'll see where we get to. So we got to a point where we you know what, we really need to be able to do that, and do it really efficiently, effectively. Went to market looking for a low-code, no-code platform. And then employ a few people that had the capability to build that platform, but also interact with our SMEs or stakeholders to get to, a, to an outcome. So that's what we did. We went to Neologic, and after a short time, we had three or four people in a team that were capable of building simple apps. All of us would be familiar with app development. Okay, so an idea of building an app on a platform or coding, um, and we've all, all experienced that either as the app developer yourself or interacting with someone to actually get an app brought, brought to life. So, so pause for a moment and go back to what I was talking about before where you have a use case, you have, have this thing you do, surely I can make that into that, surely I can automate that or digitise that. So I think today, what, what's something you do all the time? You collect information, you want to get to an assessment or a determination of something, and you also want to get to an outcome or a product or a document or something you can share with someone else. Okay, every person in the room would have one of them, two, 10, 15 of them. That's what we've experienced at KPMG. I'm in a team that has a mandate to support and develop enabling technology for our deals, tax, and legal practices. And we've got, I won't quote proper numbers, probably something like a thousand staff in, in that group across Australia, let alone broadly around the world. They have those use cases all the time, and geez, I'd like to be able to do an app on that, but it's just too hard. So that's where this came from. Low code, no code, just to explain that very briefly, um, the Ontologic, which is what we have used the last 18 months or so, absolutely is a no code platform. So you can go onto that platform with a bit of basic training and build an app with not writing one line of code. I say low code because if you want to get something a little bit better, a bit more enhanced, you want to have a bit of a different skin or perhaps a bit of a user experience, there is a bit of code required just to lift that a little bit. And we have certainly done that with, with some of our apps. Or perhaps you want to bring multiple apps together, link them together and get a better outcome. So here's a bit of coding, but uh, no, you can get away with, with no coding as well. Importantly, uh, this platform, along with others, uh, it does um, hold itself out as being a processor of knowledge or, or automated expertise or, or in some way automating an otherwise manual process. And it does that by facilitating a intelligent web-based questionnaire but it's more than that. It's more than SurveyMonkey or anything like that. It actually enables a lot to be happening in the background. Logic reasoning, assessments, risk ratings, collecting of data in databases, visualising those databases in a way that, that enables quite an effective way to get, again, that manual process into an automated or, or digitised fashion. And what the low-code platforms are, are very good at doing, and, and the other logics are saying, it enables you to do that build in a relatively simple way. It gives you an interface that allows you to drag and drop, it gives you an interface that, that helps you structure how you build that app, and it gets a better outcome. In the context of KPMG and a law firm, or legal function, or, or whatever context you have, it then brings to, to bear this, this transformation or disruption, I don't like using those words, but, but they are common phrases, which enables you to embrace innovation, increase productivity, increase effectiveness, uh, create new opportunities, um, show commitment to that digital transformation. 
and in many ways improve the, the client satisfaction. We, in our team, aren't just about internal efficiency. We, we had a original mandate to go out and, and build products for our clients and build innovation for our clients, so it's a return on the investment rather than just an internal uh, efficiency plan. So that's, that's where we sat. Now, I will get into the two apps that we've built, but before I go there, perhaps just talk about some of the benefits, and perhaps some of them are obvious, but I just wanted to give you a, a bit of an insight into what we've seen in, in doing and using this, this, this sort of platform over the last 18 months or so. It sort of goes without saying that there's an increased speed of delivery. We don't have to code, we don't have to go out and brief an external developer and go back and forth. We can just build ourselves, hear our SMEs, sit, sit at the table next to us and say, OK, let's build that. It gives that faster prototyping. Okay, so because it's so simple, you don't have to write all this code, you just go in there, drag and drop. There's an ability to prototype pretty quickly. You go, OK, I hear what you say. You want to have uh, seven questions. The answers of those five would lead to this conclusion, and then you want a report that says that. Okay, we can build that for you in hours, days, perhaps. So that really increases that speed of delivery. So that's my area that we've certainly seen play out. It enables greater stakeholder engagement. What I mean by that, we have, particularly in the legal context, you have a lot of rich content. <laughs> I won't go, uh, I'm going into that too much, but you have a lot of content. And what you need to be able to do is get that content but then show very quickly and prototype and iterate and say, here's where we are, is this, what, is this what I heard, is this what you want to achieve out of this app? So that enables you to do that because you can do it so quickly and get something up in front of them and, and iterate that process. It goes hand in hand if you've got speed delivery, that you'll also have a lower cost. So when I said a few years ago we wanted a capability where we could go and build something quickly, we also want it to be relatively inexpensive. Sure, we build this great app that goes out and we sell it to our clients, we can get a return on investment, that's all good. That doesn't always happen. Okay, there's a lot of, um, we thought that was going to work, that was a pretty good use case, it just hasn't worked. It doesn't matter, we only spent a few thousand dollars on that, we didn't spend, in, I might give some bad examples, we spent a lot more than that and it still didn't, still didn't pass. So we need that ability to build something quickly, inexpensive, but also get a great output. So that, that cost, lower cost delivery is really important. But perhaps the last piece, which, which is um, fundamental to a low-code, no-code platform, is the ability to build something without having those coding skills. So again, in that last session, talking about the ability to be coders in the future, or at least understand it, it does allow you to have, with a fairly basic level of understanding, an ability to build that. Okay? Yes, you'll get better at it. Yes, you can build more sophisticated apps when you're more experienced in the platform. But it does give you that ability to turn something on pretty quickly, based on some simple requirements, and something to, to take forward. So they're probably the, the big ones. There are many others as well, which, which we'll touch on as we go through the apps, but they're probably the, the big ones that came through. Now, we'll get to the apps in a, in a moment, but just before I get there, some of our learnings or challenges that, that we've experienced as well. And look, some of these are pretty, pretty obvious, but um, getting a requirement settled, getting the idea crystallized. What's the absolute critical objective here? Sit down with um, some the other day, and they're saying, oh, Tony, it'd be great if we could automate the precedent that we use, okay, such that we just ask 15 questions, automatically drops the document, got the paragraphs in the document, and, hey, presto, we have a nice document in the end. I said, yeah, I hear what you're saying there. So you just want to get a precedent prepared. Maybe this isn't the app for you. Maybe there's a, you know, a document automation tool that, that's better used for that. But what is it you're really talking about here? Is it the frustration around how long it takes to do that? Is it collecting information from your client on what sort of policy document you want? What are we trying to solve here? And often we get to a position where the requirement is actually we just want to do a better automated piece of it and then get to the end. So get that down first, or at least a critical objective first, and then move on. I talked about the benefit of being able to enable uh, better engagement with your stakeholders. You need to keep them informed, keep them involved, keep them there all the time. Iterate, go back to them. Is this what you really meant? Is that right? Are we still heading in the right direction? so that you actually get a successful outcome. And all the apps that we've seen have great success have been exactly that. We've got an enthusiastic stakeholder, someone who's giving us great content, but we can constantly interacting with them and understanding what they're wanting to achieve. Neona provides us a platform, which is awesome. We can go in there, self-serve, build our own apps. But guess what? They know it better than anyone. So why wouldn't we go and, and, and talk to them and say, well, we've got this use case. Um, we're thinking we, we want to do this, and perhaps we can collect a database on the side. Uh, there's going to be lots of data in there. How should we do that? We think we'll do it this way. And I go, mm, yeah, I wouldn't do that. Um, that's going to have a, a problem down the line or the performance might not work so well. So talk to them. Get the rapport with that provider and say, 
I'd like to do this, how should we do that? Or in fact, should we even do it in the first place on this type of platform? Okay, so you've got to build that rapport and really tap on the expertise they have. They're the ones that build the, build the platform, understand what's, what's possible. The last two sort of go hand in hand, um, but it's, it's, it's expecting change, expecting the path to change as you go down. Anyone in the room that's had a, a role in doing app development or any sort of uh, troubleshooting of a problem, you have to expect change. You have to expect that what you first started with might not be where you end. Okay? But even more so when I'm talking about a low-code platform where you want to do things quickly, prototype things, get there quicker, um, have a low cost, you want to be able to understand it's going to take a little while to, to get to the end, but do it quickly and do it effectively. So that covers off the, the being agile as well. Don't go, yep, I've got it, thanks for that. Go and sit in a dark room, code it out, and then come and say, look at what I built for you. And they'd go, that's not what I wanted. I didn't want that in the top corner. I don't want to press that button. Can we just talk about that? So I'll go, no, 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 don't go away. Let's sit here together, brainstorm on the screen, and work out how we do it. Okay, so really have to make sure that you're agile and you actually um, have the interaction with people that you're dealing with. Two, two ones in the middle here I just want to touch on briefly, and I'll illustrate it when I go into the two apps that I'll show you today. Wireframing and process mapping. Everyone's heard of wireframing? Yeah, pretty common term. It's basically being able to visualise what we're going to build for them. So again, in that legal context, um, I've talked and, and joked about the content that we get from a, a legal SME is amazing. Okay, so much content, they're trying to uh, do an automatic assessment on, on a piece of law, they'll come to you with pages, pages of content saying, here's all the questions we want to ask, can you digitise that for us, thanks. You go, yep, sure. Um, that's really important, and I, I hear you, but let's talk about what it's going to look like. UI, UX, all those wonderful uh, abbreviations that we're common, commonly using nowadays. Wireframing really helps with that. Okay, here's what I've heard, what about that? Does that look okay? They may not have been given thought to it. They may not have been thought of what colour do I want, what skin do I want, what power do I want the, the, the user to interact with that. When you're talking about legal content, particularly um, complicated legal content, you don't want to be having complicated screens in front of them or, or, or hard to navigate through the, through the information you're trying to get them um, to assess things on. So wireframing and discussing, what do you think of this? Have a look at that. Do you like that colour scheme? Do you like how that's working? What if they had the ability to go back to the start by pressing this button? Do you like the shape of that button? All those things are very important. And any of you that have just opened the app that we've got for the event group today, you go, this is actually quite nice, I like that background, well, that, that icon's easy to understand. That's very important and critical, particularly in these, these environments. And yes, it's a, a low-code platform, and maybe they're trying to do basic things to start with, you can actually bring it to life as well. And the second one, which again, I'll, I'll illustrate uh, as we go into one of the examples, process mapping is critical here. Okay, so I've talked about this platform being a, a place where you can publish an intelligent questionnaire to get to an outcome. Okay, whether that outcome is an automated email, a document, uh, a database, whatever it might be you're automating, you have to get that process right. Okay? Now, getting that right is important, obviously, to get, to get the right outcome, but your app just won't work unless every single path that you take through a decision tree or a logic flow or a reasoning, it has to be true. You can't have say yes and go three different directions. It just won't work. But more importantly, that process mapping exercise brings people that have been involved in the process going, oh, actually, you know, I don't, we don't want them to go that, through those set of questions again. They've already answered them. Can't we just take a shorter route and just say, are all these questions going to be the same for this scenario? Press that button, and then you just cut out 14 questions. Okay, so the process mapping really shows how you can cut out wastage, but also get to a better outcome. Okay, let's talk about something we've actually built. Um, and we're very proud of these, these two apps that I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you today about. Uh, this one's been a, a, lot, a little bit longer in the making than we, than we hoped, but it's because of the, the complexity that we've, we've encountered. So KPMG Law Data Breach Assist. As the name suggests, as my naming branding people tell me, it has to describe what it does. So it assists our, our clients, our organisations, in determining whether they've got a problem around data breach. And I expect a number of you in the room are, are aware of um, uh, the data breach legislation that came out in February 18. And this simply allows them to go through an intelligent questionnaire and determine whether what's happened to them is in fact a data breach that requires uh, notification. In doing that, it actually documents all those, all those um, 
the events, stats from any actions they took, and then gets a report at the end which they could perceivably give to the Australian Information Commissioner saying, this is what happened, this is what we're doing about it. Let's have a few, few, three, few screenshots. First one here, this is what we, we settled on in terms of the interface, what it looks like. Pretty clean, uh, very nice um, and easy to understand. Because well, a person has just had a potential data breach, they don't want to be confused by anything, or really, really simple and clean. So we did a bit of wireframing to get there. Okay? We settled on this one at the bottom corner, which is sort of we got to pretty clean white background, but it took a bit of iteration to get back and forth. Didn't like the top left at all. <laughs> this one here was too dark. But it took a bit of time to get to where we wanted to get to. So that wireframe became pretty important to get to that, that final place to be settled. This is a bit, this is quite a complicated app by the time you work through the, the, the legal content. So we wanted to have them, this side panel, which allows them to know where they are in the app at any point in time. And again, uh, working through how that best presents. So we need to have a, a side panel. Now, process, process mapping. I've lost my title at the top there. But process mapping became very important. Um, for those of you that may have some familiarity with the legislation we're dealing with here, there are a number of types of data breaches, and in, indeed you can have multiple types in one, one event. So you have to work out how that process map works. At a high level, pretty simple. Set up your app, screen what you, what's actually happened, and then decide which path to go down. But be aware, it gets very complicated very quickly when you're talking about what devices you lost, what records you lost, what, what type of records you lost. When did it happen? How long ago did someone report it? All these things have to be covered off. So you get a process map like that. Now, you can't read that. But what that actually got to was, even in doing that process, as I said before, we discovered that, and we have to go through all those questions again. What? No, we don't. If those questions are the same as the same event, we don't have to go through for that device, that device, that device, that record. We can truncate that and say, actually, we can get straight to the end really quickly because of what we've seen. Or, Three questions in, you find out you've got a problem. You've got a problem. You've got to um, report that breach. So we can go straight to the end and say you've got a high risk. Get onto that commissioner tomorrow. Okay. So there's an ability to, to jump jump certain certain logic. And then we get to the end. You have a nice report that's been automated, and we have something we can actually tangibly take to the next step, which is then reporting or, or working out how how you troubleshoot or remediate what, what's happened. You have a full transcript of what occurred in collecting that information from the user, and then you also have a, what have been these producers like a risk rating of sort of low, medium, or high risk based on what was being presented. You get a nice glossy that has from KPMG, and a nice report saying, Dear Jane, whoever threw out the report, this is what you told us. We think it's an unauthorised disclosure. It happened 17 days ago. You still have 13 days to report. Uh, we can help you do that. So the last one, which I'll spend just a few minutes on, uh, is our most successful app that we've built today. And it's in the context of, sort of a law context, it's immigration law, and how when visitors come into Australia, whether they have to get a visitor visa or what type of visa they have to have. And then, um, just through this diagram, it's pretty easy to explain. Um, employees come into Australia and they have to decide whether they need a visitor visa or whether they um, are going to be subject to tax or superannuation uh, because of what they're doing in Australia, how long they're in Australia, etc. So the client that we did that service for uh, recognised that it's an important thing to be on top of, but guess what, it was really hard. Okay, so us as the advisor, they outsource it to us, when everyone's coming in, they email us, they call us, we, we exchange uh, checklists, what are you doing, what are you doing, how are you doing it, who are you doing it with, and then we come back and say, well basically you told us you need to fill in this visa, here's the link to an email, go off and, and prepare that and we'll help you, you, you lodge it. That, in its very nature, is quite arduous and can be very time consuming, particularly when the people are difficult to contact. So we thought, no, there must be a better way of doing that, so we, so we digitise it in this app. They go in there, answer a few questions, it gets to an automatic assessment. Based on what you've told us, what you're doing, how long you're here for, you need a sub 400 visa, here's a personalised email, it takes you to a link that has that, that form to fill in. Comes back to us, we help them submit, and it's all done. But more than that, the HR department that are responsible for this have to know what's going on. They have to know what employees are coming, whether they've got the right visas, whether KPMG signed off on what they've done is appropriate, so that when they get to the airport, they have the right visiting visa to come into. So there's a nice database that's built along the way, and there's a separate app that actually publishes that database, so they can go in at any point in time and go, the last month we had 193 employees that came into Australia, 90% uh, of them had visas, 10 didn't need them, and this person here is difficult. <laughs> so, so we have that ability to publish that sort of information as well. 
pretty simple interface. This was built by one of the, the guys that had you know, three days of training. Six weeks later, he built this. Okay, nice skin. Context of you know coming to Australia, so there's a nice skin in the background. There's about 30 or 40 questions depending on the answers you provide. It then automates an email which goes out to those um, people that interacted with it. Also, an email back to KPMG saying someone's just used it. Um, here's the outcome. Perhaps you can call or it's been automated. Are you happy with that? Very simple. But once they're successful, it's now being used 300 times a month by 300 separate employees. And for the five or six months it's been up and running, we've used about 2,000 times. So that's a good news story in terms of something that's really simple. It clearly automated a process that was that was very manual and quite frustrating to do sometimes. And it has uh, brought, brought great user experience for our client, let alone the team that's servicing that client. Um, the only other comment I'll make before, before finishing, I guess it's um, understanding the capability of something that at the, at the outset is very simple. Okay, no code, don't need to have any, any coding experience. You can very quickly turn it into something that can really change and disrupt the process that you thought that just how we have to do it. There's a number of other apps I can, I can talk about which, which, which do just that. They might just be making something more efficient. You often get other benefits out of it you weren't expecting. Okay, yes, there's a time saving, but sometimes there's better integrity or better accuracy if you've got a better audit trail. Or you've got a database that's sitting there that you can tap into and understand what's happening and how long it to do something. So there's a lot more benefits we're seeing coming out of these apps than just digitising or, or putting something into an app to get to a remote outcome. 